Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. A very popular social media influencer by the name of Keith Lee has been trending all week for his food reviews in Atlanta. He's been actually doing a food tour in different cities and when he reached Atlanta, he didn't have the best experience. Some restaurants had odd rules and they didn't provide takeout services. And also some restaurants didn't treat their customers fairly at all. And this is what Keith exposed. He noticed that these restaurants were quicker to give him special treatment. Meanwhile, they would have their regular customers waiting for an hour to two hours just to get a seat. He noticed that they did this at Toast on Lennox, Old Lady Gang, and The Real Milk and Honey. So he basically exposed the unfair customer service. Keith has a very large following. He has well over 14 million followers on TikTok alone, and his food reviews can literally make or break a restaurant. And a lot of these restaurants invite him over because they want free exposure. So when Keith shows up, they're gonna roll out the red carpet for him. They're gonna make sure he gets the best services, make sure that they're on their best behavior so he could give them a good review. Meanwhile, they treat the other customers like an afterthought. And Keith doesn't like that because he doesn't feel like the experience is truly authentic. You can't treat him one way, but then treat the other customers another way. So I totally understand his viewpoint on this. And he has been calling out some of these restaurants in Atlanta and it has caught a lot of attention to the point where he and his family were receiving threats and staff from other restaurants have been receiving threats too. I mean, it's been completely chaotic. Again, I can't win for losing. I understand everybody gonna have an opinion on the situation. You can disagree with me. You cannot like what I say. Completely understand, I'm okay with that. But when my safety and my family's safety start coming into play, that's where I draw the line at. But what can't happen is when my family or the restaurants or anybody's safety start coming into play, it's absolutely overboard. Especially when I was asked to give my opinion. Cause you telling me my opinion only matter if it's positive. Cause if it's positive, you got my face plastered on the wall and you saying keep leaping here. But if it's negative, I need to sit down somewhere and you don't know who I am. Me and my family will postpone touring if other cities gonna be like this. Every review not gonna be the best. I'm gonna be 100% honest. If you want me to come, please understand, I will be honest. And nobody's safety should be on the line. Not mine, not my family, not the restaurants that we go to. Relax. Now, one of the big viral moments of his Atlanta food tour was when he reviewed the Real Milk and Honey restaurant. Yes. We are at the Real Milk and Honey on Main Street and College Park. Before we came, we attempted to call our order in. We were greeted with an automatic message that said they do not take call-in orders. The automatic message said the only way you can do pickup is through DoorDash. We went through DoorDash, they was closed. But online, it said they closed at five o'clock. We went on DoorDash at four o'clock, but we were already here, so we just went inside. I stayed in the car and my family went in and they told them they were closed early for deep cleaning. Yet the door is wide open and it's people still going in and grabbing the order. For the record, afterwards, I did walk in and they did recognize me and they attended the services, but I respectfully declined. I'm a normal person. I pay for my food like everybody else. I walk in spots like everybody else. We are all normal people. Respectfully, if you're not going to do it then, don't do it now. So that's what Keith had to say. And Keith always encourages people not to trash these restaurants or trash the employees at these restaurants. His intention is not to take away business from these restaurants at all. However, he has to be honest, right? So he didn't have the best customer service experience at the Real Milk and Honey. Now it was said that one of the managers at the restaurant actually responded to this video and she dissed Keith. She said, y'all let an autistic man tell you where to eat. Also, it's only TikTok. Nobody give an F in real life, be for real. The owner of the Real Milk and Honey also responded and he basically dismissed Keith. Did you see this Keith Lee video about the Real Milk and Honey? And who is this Keith Lee? Daddy. You don't know Keith Lee? Yeah. No. So he tried to play Keith Lee and say he didn't know who he was. Obviously he knew, but he was trying to play him and he got scalped for that. People went in on him and of course his company had to issue a statement and they had to apologize because the backlash was so great. But at that point, the damage was done. People were turned off completely. And of course they ended up losing business because their response was so off-putting. I'm gonna explain the power of social media and making sure that you treat people the right way. Walking past the real milk on the honey, as you can see, there's nobody out here since Keith Lee came by and reviewed the restaurant over here. You know what I mean? They, they're a little light right now. There's some folks in there, but they're not as busy as they normally would be, and the patio is empty. You gotta get that service together, and right now. 
now i understand why milk and honey got the backlash it got but i do think it was really really weird and twisted of people to send threats to some of the employees at the restaurant in fact they were sending threats to the wrong restaurant the real milk and honey and milk and honey are two different restaurants the real milk and honey is a restaurant we went to Milk and Honey is a restaurant we did not attend. I already was very clear and transparent, asking y'all not to leave hate anywhere. But specifically, don't leave hate to the Milk and Honey. They didn't do anything. Update, I just received a notice from the owner of the Milk and Honey. The place that we did not go to, them and their employees been receiving death threats. I'm absolutely 100% not with that. When I saw this, I kind of said to myself, okay, I get it. People get upset when they're not served correctly. But I also do feel for some of the staff working at these restaurants because people can be really rude and nasty. And it's really hard to please everybody. It's also hard to always accommodate people because sometimes people go into these restaurants, they sit there for a long time ordering multiple meals, which makes the wait time so much longer for the other customers. And these restaurants are already packed and they're already bombarded with all of these orders so they're not always able to give the best customer service especially when things are so hectic and busy and people are so demanding so i can see it from both sides i can see where people are upset when they don't get the service that they feel like they deserve especially since they're paying customers but also i can see how the staff can get overwhelmed and have to resort to implementing rules because it's just a lot i mean the restaurant business is not an easy business to run at all but that's just me going on a whole tangent back to the topic at hand i do think the owner of the real milk and honey restaurant did not handle the situation correctly and he definitely deserves some of the backlash he got and also the manager deserved some of the backlash she got too because her calling Keith autistic was just wow to me. Even if he had a learning disability, does it mean that his opinion doesn't matter? I mean, their response and reaction was just trash. Now, Keith Lee also critiqued the restaurant Old Lady Gang, which is the reality TV star Candy Burris's restaurant. And once again, he pointed out the fact that he was receiving special treatment over the other customers at the restaurant. They were making other people wait, but as soon as he came in, they had a table available for him. And he made sure to send his family in first because he wanted to see how they were gonna treat his family versus how they treated him. And of course, they made accommodations for him, but they were trying to make his family wait. My family asked how long the wait was to be seated. They said an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah, hour and a half. Okay. She also said they didn't have any reservations available. So they didn't take out any number, any contact information, nothing. My family then came and relayed that message to me and I decided to go in myself. The lady said the table was ready. As always, I don't want any special treatment. I want to be treated like everybody else. I pay for my food like everybody else. I'm a normal person. I'm a normal customer. So I asked how long the wait time has been today. She said an hour to an hour and a half. So which I then asked, how were you able to sit me in five minutes? Again, my family just attempted to eat there less than two minutes ago. I then told her I changed my mind. We're going to go eat somewhere else. And I said, God bless you. And I walked out. On second thought, it's okay. We, we're going to go eat somewhere else. Though. I appreciate it though. Now, Candy Burris did respond to this, and when she first responded, I thought her reaction was decent enough. I know some people weren't satisfied with it, but I actually appreciated the fact that she acknowledged Keith. Instead of dismissing him, she actually showed gratitude towards him, so she wasn't disrespectful at all. I thought it was a very professional response, but some people didn't like it because she didn't address the special treatment claims. I do think Candy avoided speaking on that because she didn't want to throw her own business under the bus. And I could understand that. Now, she actually did do an interview and she was asked about it again on the Neighborhood Talk. And this time her response was a little bit weird because she basically justified showing Keith Lee special treatment over her other regular customers. To be honest with you, I think people need to understand that Keith Lee, I'm a fan of his page too, I watch, right? right? And we know that he can help make or break a restaurant. And right now it's like a time where all the restaurants aren't doing that great, right? right. So anybody would want him to be there. And I just feel like at the end of the day, well, first of all, I didn't tell her to show him no favoritism because I like you. I know that he doesn't like that. Right. But, you know, our host, she, I don't know, she said that it was because she checked the people off with us and that's what happened. But even if it wasn't, I think he needs to understand that people want to show him love. And it's not that we don't love, love our customers, but if we 
let one celebrity or one influencer go early, it doesn't hurt the rest of our customers because he's taking pictures, he's doing right. stuff, and a lot of them are happy that he's there. But if he doesn't eat at our restaurant, it does hurt us because all the business they had, they had the opportunity to show them how great they was, and they had lines wrapped around the building. Mm -hmm. We don't. Get the video got cut off there, and honestly, I wasn't here for this response. As an owner, I do think Candy should have taken some accountability. I don't think she should have justified what her staff did because that makes her customers feel like you don't value them as much as the celebrities. Now I get it, she wanted Keith to be there so he could give her restaurant a rave review so she could attract more business, but if your people are gonna treat Keith differently than they treat the average customer, the review wouldn't be authentic people wouldn't be able to trust it at all. So that defeats the purpose. I think Candy missed the opportunity to really take accountability here and it does make her business look funny. Now, Keith Lee also got some backlash from the former football player, Chad Ochocinco. Chad ripped Keith apart on the Nightcap show for critiquing black businesses. Okay, but I don't like the fact of what he's doing. Ocho. I don't like. I don't, I don't. I don't like. Ocho. I don't like the critiquing of our restaurants and and having people and and and, and talking bad about our guys' businesses and Ocho. like you know Ocho. how hard you know how yeah. hard it is get it. for us to Ocho. even get in the food industry and to have Ocho. our own restaurant and so like, what are we doing? I'm going to be a motherfucking food critic. Gordon Ramsay is the only food critic I know. So what yeah, makes you a goddamn food critic? Oh, because you you have you have a platform because you got social media. You know what? If you have a large platform of that magnitude, you shouldn't be saying nothing bad. You should be praising all motherfucking restaurants. Nah, hell no. Nah. No, you and I gonna disagree with that one. Now, what Chad said was some BS. I'm not gonna lie to you. And I get that he's frustrated with the idea of black businesses being put on a microscope like this, but I do think it's helpful in a sense because it does actually give these business owners incentive to make improvements when it comes to their customer service. But also I believe Keith Lee has done a lot of good for a lot of these businesses. He has visited restaurants that have been underrated and under marketed. And one review from him has completely turned things around for some of these restaurants. Like he has been saving a lot of businesses. The name of this place is the dining experience. It's about 30 minutes from downtown Atlanta. When you put up, it was completely empty from the parking lot to the actual restaurant itself. Nobody. Now, like I said, when I was done with my food, I walked in and the guy that I met who was the waiter, he had some of the best customer service I experienced in a long time. So this is how real the Keith Lee effect is. All these calls, I live in this area. Over here at the dining experience and I'm only on the side of the building. So we would ride past this, me and my son, every day going to and from Peachtree City. Don't stay empty. Now that pack, we waiting to go eat. Like the Keith Lee effect is definitely real. Definitely real. This was just one of the many examples of the Keith Lee effect. When he co-signs an establishment he completely turns the business around and there are so many businesses that he has helped. So it's crazy to see that people are claiming that he's only bringing negativity to these businesses when he's helping more businesses than ever. Also, I didn't like the fact that Chad was saying that Keith should only say good things about restaurants, even if the restaurant experience wasn't the best. Like, why would you want somebody to lie to you and make you spend your hard earned money on something that isn't good? That makes no sense. Not only that, I didn't like how he tried to play Keith and make it seem like his opinion didn't matter because he's not an acclaimed chef like Gordon Ramsay. You don't have to be an expert when it comes to food. If the food is good, it's good. If the service is good, it's good. And if it's not, it's not. I mean, when we go online and read Google reviews and Yelp reviews, we don't question whether or not these people are qualified enough to critique these establishments. No, we read these reviews because we want to get an honest review before spending our money. We watch videos of people reviewing certain products because we want to get an authentic review. And Keith is out here doing the Lord's work and giving authentic reviews. So I think people are just hating on him because his platform is so huge and they feel like he's not important enough to have an authority on what is good and what's not good. But I appreciate his platform, I do. And I think Chad, 
was a bit pressed because he's probably friends with some of these business owners and he himself is probably a business owner. So he kind of identifies with the owners who are being critiqued, but that comes with the territory. I mean, if you're going to offer a service, you got to make sure the service is good because if it's not good, you will hear from the people. Now, Keith Lee did clap back at Chad and this is what he said. Let's talk about it. First, I want to say, God bless you, and I respect your opinion. Your opinion is just as valuable as the next person's opinion. But I do agree with you. It is hard to open a restaurant. It is hard to get the funding. It is hard to have people come in. I agree. And I'm blessed enough to be a marketing platform for those restaurants completely free. To me, it seems like you have no idea who I am. And again, that's okay with me. The main point was my qualifications. I'll be honest with you. I've been a professional fighter for almost 10 years. I've traveled the world eating food. I've cut weight from anywhere from 170 pounds to 135 pounds. And food is one of the most important things when it comes to cutting weight. So at the end of the day, I'm just a foodie. I agree with you. I've been blessed enough to be in this position. But then in return, I want to ask you, what are your qualifications to have this firm stance on this topic? Because to me, this seems like your first time ever seeing me. And if it's not, again, I have another question. Why is this your first time speaking on me? We've been blessed enough to raise over $40,000 for a restaurant owner who has cancer. We've been blessed enough to be used as a vessel to retire a teacher in less than 24 hours. We've been blessed enough to be a part of keeping multiple restaurants doors open. And all of this within the span of 10 months. I want to be very clear. That question isn't to say you or anybody else should know who I am. I simply ask, if this isn't your first time seeing me, what stopped you from talking about the positive things we've been able to do? Specifically to the community that you are worried about us negatively affecting. And to your point, that's without any formal qualifications. And let's be honest, I think one of the main reasons of why we're here is because I'm relatable. I'm a customer like everybody else. I pay for my food like everybody else. I don't take anything from these restaurants. No matter how much business comes from any post I make, I don't take any money. If I was to go to school and get all of the qualifications and start talking in big words that not a lot of people understand, would they still come out and wait in four-hour lines? I don't believe so. I'm a normal person just like you. So again, you are completely entitled to your opinion, and so am I. And my opinion is that you should have done a lot more research before you made this firm stance, especially on a platform like yours. I don't go anywhere and just give my unsolicited opinion. You said I should only get positive reviews. The reason I don't believe that it worked because it'd be inauthentic. And hypothetically, if I was to be inauthentic and you waited in a three hour wait time and you got to the front and the food was trash, who you gonna be mad at? The restaurant owner or me? Those 600 people who waited in line, they gonna all make videos and say I'm a fraud. Say I lied. And that four hour line only gonna be there that one time because everybody gonna say the food is trash. Simply just to spite me, not even a restaurant themselves. But if it's a restaurant where the people really put their time and their effort into, that four hour wait time is gonna be four hours the next day and the next day and the next day. God willingly, of course. Again, I'm gonna be very clear. I think you are completely entitled to your opinion, just like I am. 99% of my videos have ended very positively. So to make the narrative that all I do is tear down businesses is completely false. This is my last time speaking on anything that has to do with Atlanta. Atlanta really stressed Keith out, I'm telling you. Now, Chad had to eat some humble pie. <laughs> His daughter checked him when he criticized Keith, so he had to take the defeat and lay off of Keith. My daughter hit me like, listen, we team Keith Lee over here. I say, damn, baby, you doing your dad? You doing your daddy like that? Well, you know, hey, well, you know, what well, when your daughter, well, when your daughter gets you together, yeah, you ain't gonna win that. Hey, Keith Lee got me together though, baby. He, hey, that, that was a good one. He ate me up, like, he ate me up buffet style. Hey, you know he crazy. Anybody, anybody talk like that and be nice and calm? Yeah, he crazy. <laughs> yeah, he crazy. <laughs> Anyway, tell what you all think about this whole video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.